Right now, a breaking and entering is taking place, and sometimes, unfortunately, it leads to a homicide. But it gives me a little bit of comfort knowing that the men and women of FIS are dedicated and skilled and always work on these types of crimes. Let's take a further look into this crime and see if we can help solve it. Our job here at Forensic Identification Services is to collect evidence at physical evidence that might be present at a crime scene. So we would uh, attend at the scene of a crime. We would search for physical evidence, uh, a piece of paper to a bottle, to a fingerprint, to uh, a drop of blood. The intruder has left a very important piece of evidence on this beer bottle. What I'm talking about is a fingerprint. I'm not going to touch it with my hand, but I am going to take it to FIS for Irv Albert to analyze. In uh, this particular case, this bottle, we're uh, going to do a quick examination looking for uh, fingerprints on the outside of the bottle. In this case, We'll use some fingerprint powder to see if we can further develop any fingerprints that might be on this bottle. As you can see in this case, uh, quite a few fingerprints are on here, and now they're quite easily seen after a small amount of fingerprint powder has been applied to uh, the surface. On television and uh, movies, quite often what a person sees is a fingerprint being uh, inputted or fed into some sort of a computer or machine and the computer searches that fingerprint and a match is made and an identification is made. In reality, uh, things uh, don't quite work that way and that easily. Uh, fingerprint identifications are made by a human being, by a person uh, who is examining a fingerprint impression and comparing a fingerprint impression. When it comes down to um, deciding is this fingerprint the fingerprint of an accused person or a suspect? The identification is made by a forensic uh, officer making a comparison between the found or latent fingerprint to a known fingerprint. As you can see, the intruder has carelessly cut himself and has left a blood stain on this side of the cupboard. Now police can identify who the intruder is through DNA and find out how tall he is through the blood splatter itself. Let's see what Irv Albert has to say about this. A crime scene we go to, uh, there's been uh, some sort of events that have led to a bloodletting of uh, some sort. That blood is uh, very important evidence quite often because uh, blood contains DNA and uh, now with the advancement of science uh, DNA can be used to identify a suspect uh, and put him at, at the scene of a crime. So in this particular case we have a small amount of blood on this uh, beer bottle and uh, we want to capture that uh, evidence so that we can uh, have that blood analyzed and then that evidence can ultimately be brought to court. Now I'm going to collect a small amount of this material on this bottle. This uh, particular uh, material here is uh, used for detecting the presence of blood. On the end of this small strip is uh, some chemical that's sensitive uh, to the presence of blood. So when I apply the sample of blood or the sample of material suspected to be blood from the bottle to this pad, we get a color change and the pad turns from green, from yellow to green and uh, that's an indication that uh, this material is in fact blood. Ah, 
Now, a vital piece of evidence can be in the form of a footprint. And what the people at FIS do is they analyze the pattern of the shoe, the make, the model, and size, and can find out about the assailant just from a single footprint. Let's see how Irv analyzes a footprint. Quite often, uh, footwear impressions are found at a scene of a crime. Everybody has to walk in and out of a crime scene, so uh, there's always a good chance that footwear impressions are going to be left behind by a suspect uh, who commits a particular crime. Uh, in a lot of circumstances, the shoes that made those impressions have features that are unique, and those features uh, are sometimes so unique that a, an identification can be made between a footwear impression found at a scene and a pair of shoes that might be uh, found later on uh, on a suspect, for example. Of course, uh, we would make uh, notations uh, about where this footwear impression is found. We would take measurements uh, so that we could describe accurately to the court. Uh, this is exactly where we found this piece of evidence. What we will also do is we will use um, dental stone to make a cast of a footwear impression found at a scene and simply by mixing up the dental stone and pouring it into a footwear impression found at a scene we can make a mold, three-dimensional mold, of a footwear impression. There is a lot more work and dedication that goes into forensic science than what you see on television. Luckily people like Irv Albrecht are around to keep our city safe.